I'm doing this video uh, upon request. Uh, some people ask me how you get started in model building, you know, what are the basic tools and uh, advice to give. And so uh, this video is directed to people who have never built a model kit before and want to get into the hobby. So the first thing I want to discuss is uh, the kit itself, what kit you want to build. Um, Perhaps you just want to get in the hobby, you don't have a specific kit in mind, maybe just I want to build armor or I want to build cars or whatever. Uh, perhaps you saw a really nice kit in the hobby store and you want to, you know, that's what got you interested. You saw an enterprise kit that you want to build. Um, there is a general rule of thumb that says you're probably going to destroy about the first dozen kits that you buy, either just because they're not going to go together as easily as you thought or you're going to screw something up along the way and damage the model get frustrated with it but uh, I can attest to it yeah you're going to destroy a lot of kits so um, I suggest starting out with cheaper kits which are easy to build and they're also you know less damage to the wallet of something that ends up going in the trash in case you destroy it uh, so that two hundred dollar enterprise kit um, Unless you have a lot of money to bird, I suggest putting that, uh, you know, on the side until you have a bit more experience. I know myself, uh, when I first got into model building, I really wanted the fine mold 72nd scale Millennium Falcon for like $250. I'm really, really happy I never bought that because at that time I would have destroyed the kit and it would end up being in the trash. And that would have been uh, a lot of money for me. But uh, now, if I wanted to, I can build it and uh, I think it would look pretty good so anyway start out simple if you know you're into tanks you know look for discounts clearance items at the your local hobby store or just look for cheaper uh, cheaper kits this is a very simple MHAR kit we're gonna be building in this video it's a 72nd scale war, World War one tank and um, it has no photo etch or nothing fancy smancy to it. It's like a $10 kit. So this is a good place to start. As we can see here, not too many parts. MHAR is not known for super quality, but this is not too bad. We got, oh, this one comes with little pictures. Oh, that's nice. Important thing, the instructions, yes, do not throw these away, decals, put those in a safe place for the moment. Definitely want to go by the instructions. So you have the numbers on the kits, where well, you have the, the number in the instructions, one, two, three, four here. You have the part numbers, four and eleven, and um, what you need is a pair of clippers, first of all to remove uh, pieces from the sprue. A lot of people just use uh, nail nail clippers. That works fine. Uh, I got some fancy smancy ones here that are reserved just for plastic, not for metal because they're very delicate. And uh, locate your part. Here's number four here. And you want to clip away from the piece, the model piece. You don't want to clip right next to it like that because you know these don't actually cut the material they push it apart and you could end up causing a hole in the uh, ooh, this was a hard one to get off you could end up causing a hole in the piece which you would then have to fill with putty then once we get the piece off use a hobby knife to carefully get closer to the actual piece slowly whittle it down not big cuts all right again don't cut into the piece itself looking good there and then finally want a sanding stick these are little foam sanding sticks you could find at hobby stores they work very well because you can't put too much pressure on the piece and we'll just sand down so that little Burr is flush with the rest of the model, with the rest of the piece. And there we go, we are smooth. And now we can cut out uh, number 11 and do the same thing.
Work continues on putting the kit together here and um, occasionally you'll have a seam line that you have to remove. You can see that line going down the center of these tracks here and um, plastic model kits are uh, they're molded in two molds that go together like this and the uh, plastics plastic material is injected in between them and so where those two molds meet you can get a seam line on your parts so uh, you can take it off with a file um, but uh, a hobby knife just like this also you can use that on occasion so just scrape it lightly against the uh, seam line and it'll come right off again you can use the file for this as well but this uh, getting the big file in here would be a little bit difficult and this is just a quick simple job right here and luckily because all most of the tracks are going to be hidden either on the bottom of the tank or they're going to be covered up by the chassis I only have to do the front section here so no sense in wasting time cleaning up all this uh, extra area here I already did some of the assembly on this tank uh, because it does not go together well uh, that's one of the problems with MHAR build quality is not uh, the best but anyway we're getting to the gluing stage and for uh, plastic glue quote unquote um, I really recommend to me a extra thin cement. Now, plastic cement is not glue, even though if I just said glue, it's not. Um, glue is a material that is very sticky and you put things, two things together to stick them. Uh, plastic cement is actually a solvent. It actually melts the plastic and then when you put the pieces together, when it dries, it forms one solid piece. And it's much stronger than super glue and it's much easier to clean up because uh, you know, super glue you put it on and then you have to scrape it off it's a lot harder than the plastic you're using it on but uh... put this on to me uh, one of the benefits it has a handy dandy little brush already on it so two ways you can do this don't use a whole bunch dripping is bad you can put a thin amount actually i'll just do this put a very small amount on each side of where it's gonna go and it takes a few seconds to activate and start melting the plastic and then you just press it together and you need to hold it for a bit like 30 seconds or so depending on uh, depending on how much tension is on the piece um, but that is about it second way to apply it is if you have a seam going across like this you can just touch it to the seam and the capillary action will uh, just draw it down the seam line actually it's not drawing too well on this ill-fitting piece but I think you get the idea kinda of spilled there because I'm trying to use one hand to hold this thing and also what you can do is when the glue is still wet if you press really firm you occasionally get some uh, melted plastic squeezing out along the seam line and that will fill in any gaps um, so you don't have to go back later and fill them in with a putty you just trim off the excess uh, plastic uh, really can't do that on this kit because of all the fine little uh, rivets but uh, there we go that is a very ugly glue job not my best there definitely and a little bit better on this side and if it doesn't stick you can always just add a little more there we go that's going along the seam and we'll just hold this for a little bit till it dries and here we are we are all built finally uh, again MHAR not really good build quality and uh, you can tell that by the rather large gaps here um, this thing is essentially a box it doesn't have tabs that slot in perfectly so uh, you're gonna probably get gaps on this particular kit uh, can't be the builder of course not it must be the kit but um, easy way to fix that uh, you want to get some squadron green putty there's lots of different putties out there um, I actually like this one a lot of people don't but uh, I think it works pretty well 
and it's cheap and it's readily available. But uh, you know, if you have some other sort of gap filling putty, you can use that. And so we're just going to take our little spatula here. So let me wipe some of that off because these rivets are. Uh, have to be careful not to fill any of those in. And we're just going to smoosh it in. A little crude cleanup. There we go. And this is one way to use this. Another way is you could thin it with acetone uh, and make a paste and then use a brush to put it on. Uh, but again, because of the rivets, I don't want to do that in this case. So one or two applications. And then uh, once it dries, we could uh, scrape off any excess, smooth it out with a hobby knife or a file. In this case, because the rivets, it will be a hobby knife. But uh, once we're done with this, we can go on to the painting. Now we've moved over to the airbrush booth and just a quick word on airbrushes. Um, what I have here, I have a uh, air filter booth, I have an Iwata Eclipse uh, CS and I have a Badger airbrush or off to the side here. Um, first of all, airbrushes are not mandatory, uh, however they are very helpful. Um, if you're just starting out, just stick with uh, rattle cans, spray cans to do this type of work. Um, it's very basic, but it beats spending $500 on all this equipment right away. If you want to start moving into airbrushes, um, go on eBay and you can usually find master airbrushes uh, bundled with air compressors for under $100. And uh, they're not that great. But when you're just starting out, I mean, you don't go out and buy the most expensive car. When you learn how to drive, don't go out and buy the most expensive airbrush. And it'll be a good practice airbrush. And if you like it and start getting more invested in the hobby, you can uh, upgrade. So that's what we got here. Oh, for the, the booth itself is also not necessary. If you just lay out enough newspapers, or if you do it in the garage or someplace where all the paint particles and dust um, won't be an issue, uh, go ahead and do that, but this costs usually around $75 to $80. You can find these on Amazon or, or what have you. Just sucks all the paint particles out and the fumes. So, back to the model here. Um, I've already primed the model with some primer. Primer, a lot of people say, is not necessary because uh, this isn't a game model. This is not something gonna be that's going to be handled, so primer uh, protects the paint and prevents chipping. Um, if it's just a display, a lot of people think it's not required. Uh, I like priming everything because once you primer, go back and look over the whole miniature and look for any spots you missed, any flash that still needs to be trimmed off, any um, holes that need to be filled. That primer coat makes all that stuff a lot easier to see. So once that's done, uh, go ahead and base coat, spray can, or I did it with the airbrush, some uh, mix of German gray. And I'm gonna do something a bit more complex. Camouflage schemes is definitely something that takes a lot of practice to get right. Uh, remember when I was talking about you destroy about your first dozen models? This is a good example. I've destroyed a lot of models trying to figure out how to do camouflage. I'm still not good at it, so I can't give a whole, much, whole bunch of advice. But I'm gonna try it and uh, we'll see what happens here. If you do something like this, it's best to start off the model whenever possible and then just work your way on. The airbrushing done, now you can go back to the desk and paint in some of the details um, the tracks and the guns for instance now um, of course you know paint whatever you want metallics I always like to mix with um, regular non-metallic paint so they're not too shiny not everything's painted 
sparkly silver, or actually never painted sparkly silver in uh, for military. And tracks, even though they were metal, I mean they were like cast steel, and so they're not going to be shiny as well, and especially with all the dirt and everything like that. So I usually like to put a little metallic, but you know, cover that up as much as possible, especially with the washes later on. Uh, I just kind of mix some colors I had on my palette here with some silver, with some black, with some Panzer Aces rust color. Because you definitely want to go for something closer to a brownish tone, but uh, you got a lot of variety with tracks depending on what environment they're going over. I mean, light browns and dark browns and cleaner tracks. But uh, yeah, just not too much to do on this particular kit because it's very small and just there's not much to paint tracks in the gun so that's pretty much it and then we can move on to the next step all the extra little bits painted went back to the airbrush booth and uh, sprayed it with a gloss coat of pledge with future shine and uh, that's for the decal step and again if you don't have an airbrush there's an alternative um, you can just use a rattle can of, say, you know, testers. This is flat coat, but you want to use a gloss coat. And uh, decals always need to go over a gloss coat because um, you don't want any air trapped underneath because it'll really show up, all those little air bubbles. Um, so anyway, that's what we're doing now. We're applying the decals. Uh, it's gloss coated. Um, the decals are around here somewhere. There they are. So there you go, you just want to cut them out uh, with a sharp knife, always use a brand new hobby knife because you don't want any ripped edges. And you just dip it in water for a few seconds and um, put it on a paper towel, let it dry. And to apply decal, you can use like various decal setting solutions. Ordinary water works you know, just fine. Uh, it's very rare that I see any noticeable difference between using this stuff and water, but this is micro set, which supposedly helps the decal sit better. So I'll put a little bit on miniature or model, grab our decal, and use a brush or use the tip of a hobby knife to slide it off. the knife here get it in the proper position there we go and then ordinary cotton swab and you just press it firmly out towards the edges to get rid of any water or decal setting solution underneath And then once you're all done with all decaling, let them all dry for like an hour and then spray another gloss coat or two over it to uh, protect the decal. A couple of protective coats of gloss over the decals. Uh, the last step would be to spray it with some flat lacquer to uh, get rid of the shine and protect the model. And with that, we are done, um, at least done for a basic kit. Uh, you can call it quits right now. Or we can go into a bit more advanced work, which I'll do in the second part. But uh, hopefully this helps you get started in plastic model building. And thanks for watching, and see you in part two.